Good evening and welcome to this week's Gaming Matters. Now you may have seen in the newspapers that uh, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for the 3DS and Wii U has been released. We are joined this week by Joe Merrick who is going to tell us more about it. And before we go any further I know you might think it's a bit ironic that we're being told more about monsters by a man named after the deformed elephant man. Hello to you, Joe. Hi Scott, thanks for having me on the show. Anytime you're always welcome here. So Joe, can you tell us virgins a bit more about playing Monster Hunter 3? Virgins? Scott, you mean you've not played the game yet? Yes, that and I've never known the touch of a woman. months ago in the Zone of the Enders review, I said that there was nothing cooler than fighting robots. Well, scratch that because actually there's nothing cooler than dinosaurs. They might go by different names in this game, but Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is pretty much the closest you're going to get to squaring off against a dinosaur and barbecuing its meat afterwards. Tasty! Monster Hunter on the 3DS is exactly the same as its big brother on the Wii U. Everything in that game is sheer tier, which means you've got one massive game to take with you next time you go to the toilet. The only thing missing is the online mode, but we'll get to that in a second. First, you be wanting to know if this game's any good. Well, aye, but only for some folk. You see, these games are massive in Japan, and I mean massive. Folk actually meet up with strangers on the streets of Tokyo just to play this game together. But over here, despite a loyal following, Monster Hunter just hasn't taken off much. Its unique structure and charm have never found the audience they deserve. And that's a shame because what you get in this game is a massive, beautiful world to explore, full of dinosaurs, sorry, monsters to hunt and scavenge. A lot of people are turned off by the perceived complexity of the game, but the truth is it boils down to a simple, satisfying experience. You're a new hunter in a village that needs you. You start off doing simple quests like picking up mushrooms and fishing, and before you know it you're hunting T-Rexes, sorry, great jaggies, and capturing big bear things. As you progress, new functions open up like trading and farming, and you can use your loot to fold new weapons and armour. The great thing is, there's no pressure on you at all in the game. The amount of things you do never gets daunting, because you're free to dabble in it as much or as little as you like. Play this game on a lazy Sunday afternoon, and you settle into a kind of rhythm with it. It becomes this weird therapeutic experience, and your character's always growing, whether it's a new bit of armour or a change in weapon. There's a fair bit of variety to the weapons too, so if you get bored of one, you can fold yourself another any time. I used to cut a bit with dual blades, which are handy because they're quick and deadly, but now I'm a long sword user. It's a bit slower, it's a bit more difficult, but it looks cool as fuck. The only thing holding me back from recommending this with all my heart is that I've only really experienced half the game, and I don't really see myself changing that anytime soon. You can't go online with the 3DS version, so you have to find hunters in real life and play with them locally. There's a whole other area in the game made for group hunts, but I haven't been able to see it just because the 3DS isn't something that folk in Glasgow whip out when they're in the pub or in the bus or something. Rest assured though, that I've loved every minute I've had with the one player in this game. It's relaxing, it's fun, and it's massive. It's exactly the kind of thing that I like to have in my 3DS when I'm out and about. One day I'll get to enjoy it with my pals, but until then I'm just happy to smash some dinosaurs in the face and make some new kit from their bones. That's fantastic, Joe. That was very informative. Now, we have received a question from our viewers on Twitter. They would like to know, can you speak with the monsters and indeed, can you find out the reasons why they have become monsters? No, I'm afraid you can't speak to the monsters. But if only you could speak to the monsters. If only you could. With that very poignant sign off, we would like to say thank you for watching this week's Gaming Matters. Now remember you can find us on Twitter and just remember to keep on bit socketing. What?